Lounge and Sun. Welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast, guys. I am your host, the almighty Delbot, and with me, as always, is my beautiful co-host, Ryan. Ryan, say hi to the people. What's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> beautiful, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I mean, you, you're beautiful in every single way, Ryan. Remember so that. Nice. So nice. To you're, 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 you're a god amongst insects. Don't let anybody ever tell you you're different. <laughs> I feel like that every time uh, I watch <laughs> <laughs> anyway, digress. Today we're gonna be ca- talking about uh, Green Arrow Volume One Quiver by the ever so awesome Kevin Smith and a personal favorite of mine, Phil Hester. And uh, Andy Parks on, on Ink. Andy Parks on Ink. Um, Guy Major's the colorist. Sean Conant is the letter, and all of the original covers were done by Matt Wagner. Matt Wagner. <laughs> We love Matt. Well, I love Matt Wagner. Uh, we should read. We should read a Grendel book. I'm down. I, I think. I, I think. Yeah, we should read. We should read a Grendel book, or we we could even like switch it up and do like Grendel Batman. That'd be cool. That way, yeah. you know, it kind of eases eases the crowd into it. But uh, yeah. anyway, we're gonna be talking about Quiver, and uh, let's just, just jump right into it. Um, uh, this is something that I told a friend of mine just recently, and leave it to Kevin Smith. Leave it to Silent Bob himself. To make me a Green Arrow fan, like I, I've always liked Green Arrow. You know what I mean? I've always liked Green Arrow. I know you're you have your affinity for him. I know like you know that's your boy, that's your dog. You know what I mean? That's your motherfucker. But like you know me, I was it's like, right, oh, it's Green Arrow. That's cool. It's right exactly. there, on, right there on my arm, dude. Yeah, I love Green Arrow, yeah. and uh, right. I love Kevin Smith too. So this, right. I, this exactly. is so, probably this is probably the tenth. No, that's more than that. I've read this story more than ten times. I love this fucking run i love the character and uh yeah i'm so I like i'm so glad that we fucking read it for the podcast because i knew that this would be something that you would really fucking dig i mean right off top like right off top like as soon as you turn the pages and we have the dialogue between uh batman and superman i'm like this is the most phil hester work i've ever phil hestered like <laughs> like mm-hmm. this is I mean, I, I, I've always been a big fan of his art. I love uh, his his thick, bold lines. I love the, his uh, use of shadows. I love just just the basic uh, the basic use of anatomy. There's kind of like the old animation, like Bruce Tim style to it, but like it's his own. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's familiar enough, but it's familiar enough for people to for for it to be pleasing to the eye for people like who are just getting into comics who probably like bridge uh, who's who's bridge what bridge into comics was like the animated series uh and you know i i love it and um i i like i told you like, like i told you the other day because uh, i finished this like a, like a couple of days a couple of days ago like last week actually and uh as of last week as of when we we're recording this you know i told you that i can totally see why you love this so much there uh there is just so much elements that kevin smith uses to like you know really make this character's history so much more bright and so much that it he really he really picks and chooses what he what, like what parts of history that he uses of the green arrow to highlight this the the you know Oliver Queen's character and I really love that you know what I mean yeah like, um, what I like and you probably this is probably an event you didn't read because I hadn't read it when I originally read this I didn't even read it until a couple of years ago final night um mm. where the entire world it was a five week event the earth was completely enveloped in darkness right like that's why you see batman and superman they're standing and it's fucking cold and superman's cut off from the sun so he's kind of starting to feel the cold and i like how they have that little moment and touch on that and then you feel like because like this whole story green arrow is dead prior to this oliver queen is mm-hmm. dead and how yeah. hal jordan as parallax and had all that power he was the villain in zero hour and all he had to fucking shoot him in the chest with an arrow to kind of kind of win that battle i guess you could call it right and um yeah. you know this is how we learn how oliver queen comes back from the dead and you know i don't have any problem spoiling this because this book is 20 years old i think almost almost 20 years old that's crazy um Damn. yeah and hal jordan basically brings ollie back to life by taking a piece of DNA that was on Superman's costume 
because Superman was there when Ollie was blown up in an airplane. So he was yeah. able to extract that minuscule thing that was within the fibers of Superman's costume to bring him back. And, you know, it's kind of gross if you think about it. It's like, it's, bro. it's gross. It is gross. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but like how Jordan sacrificed himself in the final night. Right. And then yeah. after that, he becomes the specter. And so we're getting this like bridge from years past and how to see how Ollie comes back. And when we see Ollie, he looks like a goddamn homeless vagabond that's got his trick arrow is an empty bleach bottle. Like that was just like, you see him and you're like, what the fuck? Right. What and then happening. Yeah. And then as you jump, he saves some, some dude. Right. And then we jump back in, like, then we're, I think immediately in the second issue, I believe it is, he's back, yeah. he's clean shaven, he's, but he's wearing his old school costume from like the 70s, the Neil Adams one, right? He's not wearing yeah. the costume he died in, which was more the Mike Grell with the hood and all that stuff. And he, you start to pick up on stuff, which I thought was really interesting. And the more I've read this, the more I start picking up little things, is the the way he's talking, right? Yes, he's that's, that's, talk that's, that's something that I caught on like almost immediately because because he 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 he'd, uh, he'd use he'd, he'd use like certain things like <laughs> little co little cold for for that kind of get up ate it small fry like you know what yeah. I mean like I'm like wait Ali doesn't talk like why is he why is he talking like a 70s 60s comic right now yeah <laughs> and it's right. like you know like there's there's these little notes and connotations and then like the thing is it's like I didn't put two and two together when I saw him in the, in, in his uh, in his oh, in his Neil Adams costume because like you know uh, I read uh, you know. I read uh, uh, Longbow Hunters with you. And right. I think, like, you know, like, so, like, seminally, like, that, that's the costume for me. Like, the always the hood, right? And, you know, with the exposure to the, 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 the Arrow TV series, always the hood, always the hood. And it didn't dawn on me until later on, like, once, it, once everything started clicking and all the pieces started falling into place. Like, yo, that's his old-ass costume. Like, what the hell? All right? <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. I, I cut you off. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. No, that, that's, what, that's what we're doing here. You know what I mean? We're, we're going back and forth because I don't want you to forget something that, that clicks for you either. Um, I just right. love this. I read this as it came out. So yeah. I read it month to month and I had no fucking clue what was going on. I knew of Green Arrow from Longbow Hunters. That was my first, my first Green Arrow comic. And then I, you know, I had bits and pieces and stuff. And for some reason, I've always been fascinated with archer, archery and stuff, archery, archer characters, right? Like Hawkeye and Marvel was always one of my favorites growing up when he was in the Thunderbolts leading that team. And then Green Arrow, obviously. And, um, yeah, I thought it was interesting because you see him like talking like that, the dialogue, and then as the story progresses, you see why he's talking like that. And Hal didn't just bring his friend back, his best friend. He brought him back from a time when things were better, not just for Ollie. So he like he was but for Hal, right? Right. So he's reminiscing, wishing for a better time before he goes evil, before he, well. At this point, we didn't know he was infected with Parallax. We thought he just lost his goddamn mind when Coast City was blown up. So, you know, going yeah. back and reading it, like, you don't have that. You can't, like, you don't have that new history, right? Like, for Hal. But you see, like, as as you go further into it, but in the beginning, like, you see that he brings him back from a younger time. He saves that homeless dude who ends up being, like, this really rich dude. And that dude takes him in. But he's kind of, like, as we see going forward, too, he's coddling him. He's... He yeah. realizes that Ollie's from a better time. Ollie stops, like, goes into the mayor's office and 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 realizes, wait, you're not the mayor. And then Ollie starts, like, figuring shit out, like, what the fuck is going on? What, what do you yeah, mean I've also, been gone still, for he's a also, long time? He, yeah, he's also in, in still, like, a form of denial, too. Like, he, he, he thinks that everyone's playing a trick on him, yeah. right? And that everyone else is, like, I don't know what kind of, like, little, little dippity do you're trying to freaking pull on me, but I'm not falling for it. Because yeah. like you know, I you know there's there, 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 there's he's still he's still kind of like he's still fighting for the little guy right he's still fighting for the little guy but like all the conspiracy stuff hasn't really flooded in yet like you know what I mean like, you know like the Mike Grell stuff really I, I feel like yeah. that was like the tipping point for him where like you know the entire government's corrupt and like you know and he at this point he was just still fighting for the little guy when he when you know this is when him and Hal were still going this is he's from this, a time period where the him hard and Hal traveling were still going heroes cross country this yeah, is the, the hard, hard traveling, traveling heroes, heroes right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right and, and like you know like damn like what, what 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 a timeline to pick for him too because like 
from what I know, from what I know of the history of the character, this he's had he's had like one of the greatest transitions since inception to where he is now, right? Mm-hmm. He's just his transition as a character, his growth as a character has been like one of the most it's been it's been almost generational, right? Yeah. Like you know, there there they, he has he has literal generations of his of his illustrious history where he was a different person at one point and well from where he where he started to where he is, it's like God, it's a complete one eighty. It's oh yeah. It's it's yeah. amazing. It's 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 not like Batman where it's always been justice. It's not like Superman where it's always been truth, justice and, and you know, the American way. And you know, but this but you know, Ollie, he's like He's, it's great. It's 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 one of the it's one of the most notable changes in a character, but like not for the not 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 not, not bad not a bad change, but like one of the most like significant changes in a character that like he's just become better. Oh yeah, for he's sure. just become better. Even even in his absence, like he's just become better. And what I like too, like when they touch on like uh, you know uh, what Hal has been doing while he's been while he's been dead when he you know in the afterlife he's just been getting better. He's just been practicing, so like, like yeah. I, I'm really, I'm like, I, it's needless to say that I'm really, really excited to get into volume two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that look, Oliver Queen, before he's Green Arrow, he the facade that Bruce Wayne puts on as a rich playboy that is Oliver that was Oliver Queen. He was a rich douchebag. I don't no other way yeah. to say it. So whereas Bruce Wayne pretends to be this like fucking drunk fucking playboy right and um he's not oliver queen was that but then flips it and and fucking you know the everybody knows the origin right he's on a boat he gets stranded on an island he fucking is left by himself he fucking reach well the archery thing has kind of gone back and forth like why he decided to do that um but basically that's where he develops this and fucking comes back and decides he wants to be a hero right and in the 40s he was with Speedy, Roy, aka Roy Harper, and he was all like this kind of like not happy go lucky, but a lot more joyful in terms of like fighting whimsical, crime. A very Whimsi- whimsical, okay, character. whimsical. And then <laughs> you know we go into the fifties and we go into the sixties, but it's really in the seventies where he has that dramatic change with the Hard Child and Heroes. Danny O'Neill and Neil Adams. Again, I've read those stories multiple times too. I think I discovered I read those right around the same time as Longbow Hunters, actually. And, you know, him being more socially conscious and a, a lot more political overtones, uh, you know, talking about stuff that was going on in the world, not super villains. Let's go after the real fucking villains, people that are fucking kicking people out of their apartment complexes to build fucking buildings. You know what I mean? Drug dealers, all this type of shit where he goes up to fucking Hal Jordan and says, you or or not how uh oliver queen but like that black guy goes up to hal jordan and says you fight for the purple guy you fight for the orange guy when you are fighting for the black guy or 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 the i think he's something along those lines i'm probably taking it out of context but that's basically the gist of it and then we got like amazing stories that came from that to get that era that was to me at that point that was the peak of green arrow right like even though mike girl's run was really good i think in a lot of people's eyes and probably Kevin Smith's generation, it was the Neil Adams stuff, was the, the yeah. pinnacle. So for him to bring him back and have him in that light, he's younger also. His body is younger. It's not just his mind frame. He actually brought him back younger than he was when he died. So then we get the people start seeing him on the news, right? We get Connor Hawk. We get Black Canary. Yeah. And of co- like that, that scene, like, again, this was a time before he became kind of an asshole where he cheated on Dinah, where he had another kid. So he doesn't know that he's hurt her. There's some scenes, I, I'm I'm not gonna spoil scenes, but there's some scenes with him and Dinah where I'm just like, amazing. Like Kevin Smith, yeah. this is why he's one of the best writers. Like, yes, this is, I, I don't wanna call this very verbose. There's a lot of reading that goes into this, but in no way does it ever feel like, man, this is too much reading. No, ever. no, no. That yes, I agree. I one hundred percent agree. There is a lot to read, but the thing is, it never felt like a chore. It never felt like a chore. Yeah. Like it was. It like this is by the most wordiest, most fun experience I've had reading something this wordy. Yeah, yeah. and and just it, the- it was. It was. It wasn't like a far, like a like a McFarland piece where it's just like, oh, 
where <laughs> yeah, yeah you're listening to the newscasters yeah that the, the, uh, some of the or, stuff or, was or, like or or, or. Or like, or or like, you know, Claremont Magneto dialogues, like you know, yeah, it's <laughs> like, like, dude, you know come I mean? on, let's let's cut that okay, in half. Exactly, we get it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like, there's this so many is characters too. We get, we get Jason Blood, Etrigan the Demon. You know, like, there's so much cool stuff to find out. Like, eventually, that I forgot the name that they call um, him, but he's basically he's a husk, right? Like, yeah. he doesn't even have the soul of Oliver Queen. When Hal brought him back, he brought him back without his soul. And yeah. that's what you touched on in the afterlife. Where is Ollie's soul? It's still in heaven. And yeah. when he fucking figures out, like, Hal Jordan, the spec as the Spectre, brings him there and <laughs> basically introduces him to himself. He's like, yeah. and, and then you get the dialogue of, like, Hal had gone to Ollie in heaven. It was like, I want to bring you back. And he basically compromised and was like okay bring me back from a better place in my life before basically yeah. before all the bullshit and um right. that was i i really loved that i love those the or i think it's like an issue and a half where they had that dialogue i thought that was really cool and then ollie eventually decides to come back um the serial killer aspect of again yeah, i don't want i don't want to ruin that i don't want to ruin that because like that's something that I think is kind of key to the story if you haven't read it. It was a great plot twist. I I, I didn't. Great see plot that. twist. How about how about Morpheus making a little cameo in the glass Bro, ball? I was gonna tell you like that just goes to show you that this fool fucking Kevin Smith is like a tried. I mean, we have always known he's a tried and true fan of comic books, but the simple yeah. fact that he you know he 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 brought uh, uh, Professor Burgess and like the whole mythos of. You know the 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 what was what, what's that cult called in London that he was a part of that that that, that entrapped some uh, that entrapped Morpheus like he brought that into it yeah. just as a little like you know like a little like a little like a little like a little like a like a, like a little a hey, what's up Neil Gaiman like you know what I mean yeah <laughs> like I was like what am, I, like when I when I read that I was like oh my god this happens and Ryan didn't even tell me <laughs> I love it well yeah well yeah and it. you want and again remember like I said I've read it multiple times and I discovered. When I first read it, I didn't, I hadn't read Sandman yet. Oh. So I didn't even know the on the first read who that was. And you know what I mean? Like I just read it. I'm like, right. oh, some, some dudes in a fucking glass orb. Some naked, okay. some naked pale white guy is yeah. in, a, yeah. in a hourglass. <laughs> so it was cool as I fucking read it again and again and again. And like I constantly like, you know, I keep seeing the little Easter eggs that Kevin Smith puts throughout this. And this really, to me, this particular volume is a true love letter to DC Comics as a whole because of the sh yeah. the characters he brings in, the the different points in in uh, DC's history that he touches on. I mean, Morpheus, like what are like what a random thing. You didn't have to have that be be a part of this story at all. You could have done something completely different, or just you take that element out, and it's still the same story. Right, it doesn't yeah. really affect it, but it's just put there for all the fucking diehard DC guys, you know, and yeah. um, and I think that that um, yeah. When I when I saw that, I I I lost my shit. I was like, oh man, and then I was like, wait, is he the guy that ran off with the Dreamstone? No, that's not the guy. And then I it, it, like it it made me double think it for a second, and I'm like sitting here thinking like, wait, what is going on? Oh man, and then like. Later on, later on, like the importance of why he went to to see Morpheus in the first, uh, why this certain person went to go see Morpheus in the first place. I'm like, oh wow, that's pretty crazy. That's really cool that that's how Kevin Smith decided to execute things. That's it was really cool. That's something I really definitely enjoyed. Um, yeah. I also like. Um, I also like. I also like everyone's reaction to Ollie coming back. I like. I, I like Batman being over analytical. Like you know, he's over here watching all his television screens. And he, he sees the news reports of Ollie coming in, and he's like, freeze frame at 23. Rewind, rewind, rewind. And he's analyzing all the all like the, the shots. He's like, no, it's too tall. Like, the, the, the angle in which the arrow is coming looks like it's too tall for, for, for Connor. And then he, it clicks. Like, Oliver? <laughs> like, yeah. like, and I'm like, yo, like, and then, you know, that, 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 that's another thing that freaking, we don't, you know, I feel like, 
I mean, I, I mean, I'm not reading any Batman at the, at the moment, but you know, there's there that's like that that detective forensic science Batman that I feel like we don't get enough of anymore. And I'm like, yeah. that's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's that's fucking awesome. The Aquaman conf- the Aquaman interaction when he sees him yeah. with the fucking full beard, the hook hand, you know, which is probably one of my favorite versions of Aquaman. If I'm being completely honest, I think that right now him with the long hair and the beard, like. I like that version of Aquaman. He doesn't necessarily have to have the hook hand, but like 90s Aquaman was kind of my era, right? That's the era that I grew up reading. So I really like that. And then him fucking noticing that it wasn't Barry under the Flash costume. It was Wally. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) Boy, look how you've grown. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, it's just all just the dialogue, dude. The dialogue for me in it's much like Kevin Smith's movies, man. His dialogue is one main attractions for me in anything he does because i (laughs) there's just something there's just something so natural and so real about the way he writes his characters and and it comes off so so great in comic book form just as much as it does in a fucking movie whether it's in clerks 2 the the conversation with star wars and lord of the rings you know what i mean like (laughs) like there's that stuff but he puts that into his comics too man like this might be my favorite of his comic book work. I like his Clerks comics. I like his Jay and Silent Bob comics stuff that he did too. Um, I love the Daredevil. But this particular arc, like, I go back to it so, so often because it's just. Yeah. No, no. One of my favorite interactions, uh, like, it's, it's between him and Aquaman. It's like, it's four panels and it's like, uh, what, you mean as land lovers? Uh, you know, we don't all get to indulge in the nose candy. Regardless, you know, and they're, they're talking about what's going on. And you know he, how uh, Aquaman doesn't want cocaine in in, uh, in 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 Atlantis, which I don't even know how that would work. And then like it's like two panels where they're like not saying anything, and then both at the fourth panel, both of them at the same time is like, "What the hell happened to you anyway?" Like, yeah. <laughs> so and it's like you know that's I, I feel like you know the timing and the use of paneling and the use of like just just understanding the characters and the characters' relationships with each other. It's like you know, like I, I really I really appreciate that. Like. Yeah, dude. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't write it any better. Especially like, you know, Kevin Smith. What Kevin Smith really did with this is like reintroduce an old friend, right? And the way he executed it, the way the the the, the multiple characters he uses to execute it, it's like, I, I mean, I I feel like for like as a fan, like it would, it's like introduce, it's like reintroduce, it's, you know, it's total fan work. It's like reintroducing not only the world to to you know the original green arrow but to pull back in old fans like hey oliver's back Mm -hmm. and then he hits all the feels he 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 uses a plethora of different characters to convey that you know whether it be dinah whether it be roy whether it be connor whether it be freaking uh arthur whether it be bruce like you know what i mean and it's 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 one of the best things ever it's one of the best it's one of the most well-written reintroductions that I've, i've read I know, and he introduces Mia Dearden, who ends up becoming the next Speedy. Um, yeah. You know, she's like a, she's a fucking prostitute. She's fucking 16, and she's being pimped out, you know, yeah. and she gets taken in by Oliver. You know, he already, start, like, through his community work that he does, because, like, that, that was always a huge aspect of him in the 70s, right? Like, he reopens a community center, and, um, you know, moving forward, I'm not going to... I'm not going to spoil anything about Mia, um, but I like I like her character. I like the foil that she is to Oliver. You know what I mean? Like she's different than Roy was to him, but in, yeah. in a great way, you know. And she really comes into her own uh, moving forward. I mean, this run lasted over seventy five issues, um, or this particular Green Arrow series, not run, um, but the Green Arrow yeah. series. It went on, time. and it it's great, dude. Like I said, after Kevin Smith leaves. Uh, Brad Meltzer comes in. He does an awesome arc. Judd Winnick, I believe, comes in right after that. Maybe maybe there's something in between. But Judd Winnick does a great job. Um, introduces a lot of characters. Some of the characters that were adapted for are adapted into the Arrow TV show, like Brick. But Brick was an actual, like, looked like a fucking, like, almost as big as the Hulk. And his skin was made of Brick. And he was a fucking gangster, you know what I mean? Just, like, cr- just an awesome run or awesome series. And... I, I just love that. I feel like this not only reintroduced and introduced people to Oliver Queen, but I feel like it really put Green Arrow on the map 
in terms of like fandom because it was like a top seller. It was in the top 10 for a long time when Kevin Smith mm. took over this book, much like what he did for Daredevil at Marvel with the Marvel Knights. He put Daredevil at the top. Green Arrow was at the top and it was consistent. I mean, you have Kevin, Phil Hester and Andy Parks, Matt Wagner on covers. I mean, come on, dude. You know what I mean? Those covers fucking beautiful. Yeah. I yes, mean, they're agree. just awesome. I have to agree. If you're, D- you don't even have to be a fan of Green Arrow. If you're a fan of DC Comics, this is this is a great book for you to read. I think if you're a Kevin Smith fan and you've never really been into comics, I think this is also kind of a cool little entry to comic books because you don't need to have you don't need to have the history or know the history. I mean, it helps if you do, obviously, because you'll get the Easter eggs like we talked about Morpheus or talk about Final Night that event. Um, certain stuff moments in DC history that happened, but Kevin Smith or just be hype, when, or just be hype when you see whenever you see Jason Blood because you yeah. know you know what Jason Blood, Blood brings with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think that Kevin Smith just made this really inclusive. You know what I mean? He did it in yeah. such a way that um, will appeal to old and new fans, and I think that it's yes. just it's 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 one of my favorite comic book stories of all time. That's why I've, there's very I don't say very few. But there's not many series or arcs or whatever runs that I read all the time. This is something that I continuously go back to. And I'm sure I'll probably read this again within the next year. I, I try to, like, give it a little bit of time so that I can kind of, like, enjoy it. If I read it too, something too often, then it kind of takes the joy out of it for me. But um, I think that this is just I, – I don't want to spoil anything else. I mean, I, I would love to hear, you, you know, your final thoughts on it. But I think that this is just – it's amazing comics. It's just so good. No, uh, as far as my final thoughts go, it, this is, um, if you've never, ever, ever read a Green Arrow comic, this is the Green Arrow comic to read. Now, whether I like this better than uh, Longbow Hunters, it's, it's, it's two very contrast stories. Two very contrast stories that you can't compare to. Like, uh, they're both great in their own right, but I feel like as an introductory uh, to the character, and to his to his illustrious history and to his relationships with everybody, this is the comic to read first. Like, this is this is this is fantastic stuff. This is Kevin Smith like really flexing that freaking writing muscle and flexing his his fandom muscle. Like, you know what I mean? He he loves this character, and you can tell. Like, yeah. you know, you can tell you can tell when a, a writer really appreciates a character and really appreciates his history just by how he writes it and Mm -hmm. it's it's eminent here yeah you know it's eminent here that freaking kevin smith loves this character he loves the dc universe and for him to utilize green arrow the way he does to to convey that love to write this love letter that is volume one is a phenomenal feat now Mm -hmm. I mean, after this, of course, I, I I suggest go go read Longbow Hunters because Longbow Hunters is just that is just that's 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 masterpiece work in its own right. Like you know, that's that I feel like Longbow Hunters is the Green Arrow's Dark Knight Returns, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know, you know, there's just those seminal story arcs where it's just like this just sets, changes the tone of the character for all of history. Now this. This this is that bridge. This uh, you know, like, like you said, if you're a Kevin Smith fan, if you like his movies, like me personally, Dogma is one of my favorite movies ever. Dogma, it, like I actually saw Dogma before I saw Clerks, right? Okay. <laughs> so, like, and I love Dogma and the dialogue and like the conversations had between just just those just those small moments, the conversations, all those small moments to see that because this came around r- roughly around that time, right? This, this is what, what what year what year did, did this? I think this, this is about? three. Like, it's almost twenty years old. Like oh no 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 no! Oh, oh shit! 20, okay, it is it is twenty two thousand one. Shit. Oh, two thousand one. Think... Okay, see, okay, two thousand one. I think uh, that's roughly around the time Dogma came out. Don't quote me on that. Maybe maybe Dogma came out like roughly in the night, like the late nineties. I want to say late nineties. You're right. It was. I think it was ninety eight. Yeah, ninety eight, ninety nine, right around that time. So ninety nine, because Chasing Amy was ninety seven. Okay, ninety nine. 99 dogma yeah. i love fucking dogma you know george carlin was fantastic in that like this conversation had between matt damon and uh ben affleck was phenomenal i mean jay and silent bob regardless of how you take those two characters jay the things that comes out of jason muse's mouth is the most hilarious things ever now like i'm, I'm pretty sure that's 75 percent ad-libbed 
and you know, like you know, improvise. But you know, Kevin Smith like pushes that pushes the direction in which the conversation goes, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, but like you know, all the conversations, even even the stuff that Chris Rock, that Chris Rock would say, even the stuff that you know, just the, the the small conversational moments. That's all prominent here. That's this. All the stuff that made me a fan of Kevin Smith's work that made me want to go check out his entire catalog of film, it's all prominent here in this comic book. Yeah. And, and, and like, you know, and add, add to the fact that it's the fucking Justice League, like, I'm down. Like, let's fucking do it. So, yes, if you've never read a Green Arrow comic, go read this. That is my final thought. Yeah, I mean, Green Arrow is has been one of my favorite characters, and I often say that with both of the two major publishers in comic books, they often don't utilize the great characters they have. You put an A-list creative team on a book, it will be an A-list character. You know what I mean? It will, Or it will feel like an A-list character, at least. Like, to me, as I'm reading this, I'm like, Green Arrow's and Dude, he's one of the ma- main DC fucking in the upper echelon of characters. Like, yeah. that's how it yes. feels, because that's how Kevin Smith treats him. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I highly recommend this. Go pick up Quiver. Archer's Quest by Brad Meltzer, the second volume of Kevin Smith's Longbow Hunters, all the Mike Rell run. There is so much good Green Arrow stories out there, and I recommend all of them. And uh, I, I feel like if you start with this and then go back and read Longbow Hunters, I think that uh, you'll really appreciate it because I think Dylan uh, hit it right on the head with saying it. It is the Dark Knight Returns of Green Arrow. I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, no, yeah. it's... it's, it's... I mean, we 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 we've talked about it. Like, you know, if you if you guys need if you guys need more convincing, go check out that episode of the podcast. But Longbow right. Hunters, yeah. that was just that's transcendent writing. Mm-hmm. That's like that's transcendent writing. That like, um, given the brief, uh, the, the given the little that I knew about the character, really set him above a, a, a high and above a lot of characters simply because of one well, of that run. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like I said, like I said, this is if. To to get a good introduction to the character, to get to get his uh, to get his under the understanding of how other characters feel about the character, as well as his you know get little tidbits of his illustrious history. History quivers the way to go. Yeah, and I and uh, I I couldn't put it better myself. And I definitely want to read Archer's Quest with you. I think that you'll really dig that as well. But I'll wait till after you read the second volume of Kevin Smith's because I think that Archer's Quest too is just really amazing. But definitely go pick up Quiver. Um, check out the Longbow Hunters episode and go check out that book as well. And if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. Follow Dylan at the Dope on Instagram. Dope on his dope on Twitter. Uh, like, follow, subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new bit goes up. We also have a T Public account so you can get some merch with the Comic Lounge logo. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds. <laughs>